today we do an oil change. Okay, so I think before I carry on, I'm gonna get a little a little taste, a little taste of Port Alberni. We're gonna drive around and kind of explore, because I just drove through here before, so I don't really know what's here. I actually just had breakfast at this place called Boomerangs. Super good, it's really good. Yeah, it hasn't stopped raining since, uh, since I did that bomber hike. I mean, right now, like, the sun's kind of, like, shining through the clouds, but it's still raining pretty good. Okay, so I'm at the Harbor Quay here in Port Alberni. Um, basically, Port Alberni is on the ocean, but it's, like, in the middle of the island. Over there, you get big boats. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm at the marina here. It's a big boat over there. It's called the African Raven. Haven't found too much exciting here. Um, I'm gonna do a quick vacuum. And then I think we're just gonna hit the road. Actually guys, the uh, the rain has momentarily stopped. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly do a parking lot oil change, just cause I can. Uh, when you do an oil change, the only things you really need are a drain pan, oil, an oil filter, a funnel, rags, and then whatever size wrench you need to get the drain nut off. What I've done is I've bought a, uh, a roaster pan from a dollar store. It'll work fine as an oil drain pan. Yeah, here we go. First thing you need to do is you need to drain the oil out of your vehicle. So on my particular truck, the uh, the nut on the bottom is a 5.8, so I got my 5.8 wrench ready. Um, the other thing you should do before you drain it is unscrew your oil cap, because then that way there's airflow and your oil will drain faster. Okay. Your oil should also be warm, so you should drive your vehicle a little bit, so then that way it also flows better. Before you do any of that, make sure you didn't lose your keys, because I just put them somewhere and I don't know where they are. Found them, so here we go. You have to locate your oil pan, which is right here. It's not this one, that's the transmission. Um, so this is the oil drain plug right there. So the first step is to crack that loose. Okay, we've cracked it loose. This is the messy part. Make sure you kind of angle your drain pan to catch the oil because it'll kind of shoot out at first and you have to take this out and try to be quick about it because oil will go everywhere if you screw that up I find it good to put pressure on the bolt as you pull it out so then that way it doesn't start leaking before you're ready to pull it out here we go just like that mess free as you can see the oil is pretty black so it's probably a good thing we changed it a little early also make sure you, that your drain pan is big enough for your oil because that would be really bad if you overflowed it. This is why I prefer to do oil changes on my own versus a shop because you will get trickle coming out of the oil pan for quite some time and if you don't let that fully drain out then there's still a bunch of bad oil in your vehicle and most shops that advertise like 10 minute oil change or a 5 minute oil change, oil changes shouldn't be that quick. So. Yeah, let it drain out. Meantime, we can spy on other people. Yeah, if you're gonna do a uh, parking lot oil change, find a parking lot that's not busy, because people give you weird looks. Something I like to do sometimes to get some of the old oil out is you take your new oil and you put maybe a half a cup or so in the oil drain, and then it'll help to kind of rinse out the old oil that's sitting at the bottom. Okay, now the other thing you have to do is change your oil filter. And it's different on every vehicle, but this is where mine is, right there. And this is the part that gets really messy, because you have to unscrew it and it's full of oil. Try not to get it everywhere, especially when you're in a parking lot. So, I'm gonna do that, but I'm not gonna film me doing it, because I'll probably need two hands. Okay, I guess my truck's pretty warm, because it's really hard to get off. Um, it should, it, you should be able to get it off with your hands. Otherwise you need like an oil filter wrench, but I don't have one of those, so just keep reefing on it, I guess. Yeah, this thing is like really freaking tight. I, I can't really get it off with my hands. Okay, so now we're in a little bit of a pinch. Um, this is when you would typically use an oil filter wrench, and it's, it's a device so that you can leverage it off. There is a trick to getting old oil filters off, and it's really messy and I really didn't want to have to do this but it's the old hammer and screwdriver trick. I'll show you what that is, I guess. So basically what the hammer and screwdriver trick is you take a screwdriver and you hammer it through the side of the oil filter and then you have a handle to loosen off the oil filter. It's messy because the oil filter is full of oil and you're putting a hole in it. So I got the hammer through one side, but what you need to do is you need to hammer it all the way through or else it'll just kind of 
bend. What I decided to do was uh, let the oil drain out through the puncture hole, so then when I do pull it off, there's less oil to spill everywhere. Okay, we've cracked it loose. Um, now we try to pull it out without making a mess. Okay, so now what you wanna do is you kinda wanna clean up the area that it came out of, all the old oil, and then it's time to put the new oil filter on. So when you remove your old oil filter, you need to make sure that the rubber seal is still on that filter. If not, you need to make sure that you take it off of your vehicle. Then on your new oil filter, you need to take some oil and lubricate this seal before putting it on so that you don't wreck the seal putting it on. All right, she's, uh, she's shined up, we're ready to put it on. Now, when you're putting these back on, what you need to do is put it on as tight as you can put it with one hand and just kind of snug it on there. You don't want it too tight because then you'll never get it off just like we had that problem just now. By the way, I'll mention this has been dripping the whole time, so that's partly why I like to make sure that it's fully dripped out. So once you've let that drain as much as you want, the last thing to do is just to put this uh, drain plug back in. And uh, same thing goes for the drain plug, is you don't want to over tighten it. So just get your uh, get your socket on there, and just make it nice and snug. You don't need to reef on it completely, because if you strip those threads, it's uh, not a cheap fix. Once you've done that, you don't need to go into the truck anymore. The next step is just to add oil back into the truck. But you need to make sure you don't put too much oil in, or else you have to go underneath and let out just a little bit, which is really difficult and very messy. This is a part where you should definitely use a funnel or you will get oil everywhere. It'll end up on your headers, it'll burn, and it'll smell. When you're adding oil back in, you should be checking on your dipstick to see if the oil is showing up on your dipstick yet. As of right now, that's where our oil is, so we need to keep adding more. When you do add the oil in, wait a couple seconds before you check the dipstick because the oil still has to flow into the pan. So once your dipstick finally reads full, what you need to do is start your engine. But make sure you put that back on before you start the engine. The reason for running the engine a little bit is because you want the new oil filter to fill with oil because it will be empty. And then, once you've ran it for a minute or so, you, you can turn it off and add back the oil that will now be missing. Once you're finally done with that, pour your old oil carefully back into the old oil thing and you can take that to an oil recycler. Alright, so we dropped off all of our old used oil stuff, including the pan, at Canadian Tire. So, most of them across Canada, I think all of them actually will accept uh, used oil and oil products. Don't throw it in a dumpster, it's bad for the environment. Okay, so I was gonna leave Port Alberni, but um, it's about 4.30. There was a shop I wanted to go to on the way back from Port Alberni, but it closes at five o'clock. So I think I'm just gonna go tomorrow so that I can hit that shop on the way home. And uh, yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. If you liked it, don't forget to like, comment, share, and do good things for the environment.